He makes them both. So Caffey, a 63% shooter, ties the game for Alabama. You watch. So come, as soon as they go over the 10-second line, right now they'll double team. There it comes. Into the corner. They'll double down. Round the horn. They ought to get Conzo Martin loose. He's their three-point threat. Ball knocked away. Purdue still has it. Here is Dove. because it looked like Alabama had the people inside against him. He might be the best athletic ability of anybody on that club. Watch this move. I don't want to say anything about it. Just watch the move that Herb Dove makes here. Here we go. One move, two moves, three moves, four moves up in the air. Count them. Sean Pecklove commits his second personal foul. Waddell has gone out of the game for Purdue. And Roberts is back in. So here is Dove. This is the free throw, so he gets only two points out of that, and Purdue is leading 11 and on. Bama had scored six in a row before that basket inside by Dove. They're not giving Orange any room. Porter Roberts doesn't want him to get loose with the threes. You know they looked at the films. Knocked away by Stanback. Happy in trouble. Knocked away and a steal. Two on one break. Back Hunter to him. Mark. Back to him. Up. In 10 of Purdue's 13 points. Double stack down low. Nice move and fault the three. There he is. And the open from the corner. Robinson on the other end gets the rebound. Remember, Robinson not only leads Purdue and the nation in scoring at 30 a game, but 10 rebounds for the Boilermakers as well. He has scored 30 or more points in seven straight games, and here's a steal by Sean Pecklove behind a Faulkner, and it's a two-point game again with 12-15 remaining in the first half. Faulkner with four. And they're getting set again. The double on everything. Interesting how Alabama hangs in there, Al. A few more shots in the perimeter, and this will go down to the wire. They have to hit from the perimeter to be good. Peck Love with two fouls is on Robinson. Tipped up and put in by Stanback. Ian Stanback, the senior from East St. Louis, Illinois. There are no senior starters for Purdue. And it's a 15-11 game. Both teams playing outstanding defense, but you can only do so much against the likes of a Robinson, and you've got to watch him more than the others. He's got 10 of their 15 points. That's how come Iron Stanback that time got the putback. They doubled on Robinson, penetrating towards the basket. Stanback denying the pass and a timeout with 11.26 to go in the first half. At GEO, we've thought a lot about safety. That's why GEO Prism comes with standard dual airbags and available anti-lock brakes. In addition, it's equipped with a rugged steel safety cage. You see, we not only want to make accidents easier to avoid, we also want to make them easier to walk away from. Call 1-800-GET-TO-KNOW and get to know Geo Prism with over 100 standard safety features. Imagine adhesives so strong they help hold together 100 tons of soaring transportation. Imagine a fabric so bright it lets you see an accident in time to prevent it. Imagine a single disc so powerful it can soar everything imaginable and protect it for a lifetime. These products and thousands more that make our lives better exist because the people at 3M imagine. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick, antiperspirant that gives 110%. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick, for movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. These days, you see someone on a cellular phone just about everywhere. Good thing we decided to set up our network there. Cellular One, clear across America. As soon as a State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. We work as partners. 
Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This week on Dave, Bill Cosby, Diane Sawyer, Neil Diamond, L. McPherson, and Rosie O'Donnell. This week... We're back in Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Nick Stockton and Al McGuire. Purdue leading Alabama. Purdue advancing to the second round for the first time since 1988. And Alabama has gotten to the Sweet 16 in five of their last seven tournament appearances. And back in the game is Antonio McDice coming back after he was hit in the face in the first minute. They were worried about the broken cheekbone earlier in the year when he wore a mask and he missed three weeks of practice foul inside so they had extra concern but let's see McDice who was hit by his teammate Peck Love in the opening moments of the game this is Iron Mike this is a uh, Hollyfield that's a shot he was out I'm telling you audience he was not out he went down for the count of about 32 has a lot of courage coming back this soon into the game he sat out for seven and a half minutes in the game, a foul is on Justin Jennings coming into the ball game. Artie Griffin on the free throw line. One out of two for Griffin. 15 to 12, Purdue in front. So McDice back in there. He did not miss any regular season games. He was injured and had to wear the mask early on in practice. Winding down to 11 minutes to go in the first half. They got big dog out of there. They usually give him about a two or three minute rest this time of the game. And the turnover. There's Glenn Robinson getting a rest after scoring 10 points early on in the game. He also has committed one foul. So Robinson has just two points fewer than the entire Alabama team. Link Darner is in along with Jennings and Stanback. Roberts and Conzo Martin defending. Stanback has the ball after the miss shot by Pitt. So Purdue going with their bench, and this would be a time for Alabama if they want to cash in against the reserves of the Boilermakers and Robinson on the bench. Driving in, and the basket counts. Justin Jennings, a sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Exciting offensive player. Going baseline. Watch J.J. here put you to sleep. He gives you a static step, then all of a sudden spurts and explodes. Foul is on Jamal Faulkner. That's his first and the 15th foul against Alabama. Coming back in the game is Caffey. So Caffey and McDice, the two starting centers or the two regular centers for Alabama in the lineup. And they're trying to do some business here with Robinson on the bench. I say Robinson will be back within a minute. And the guy they're trying to take out of the game is this fella here, Orange. Cut the head off, the body dies, but Bama's not dying without him scoring. He has not scored yet. Not been able to get off any shots against Porter Roberts. Normally he's not a scorer, Dick. He's normally a traffic cop. But uh, what he showed in the first half against Providence was big-time scoring from Cannon Range. Artie Griffin dribbling the ball with four seconds to go on the clock. Trying to keep it alive is Caffey. He can't do it, and the Boilermakers will take over possession, and Glenn Robinson is coming back in the game. He didn't have a long rest at all. He was on the bench for a minute and 36 seconds. I think the first time down, I'd keep the ball out of Glenn Robinson's hands. Let him just get into the flow a little bit. But who am I to say? This fella plays on another level. This is all galaxy. Just a big dog. You said he'd be in within a minute, and it was 23 seconds after you sounded the clarion there. Here is Roberts. Misses a three. Jennings with the offensive rebound. Jennings tips it in. Great second and third effort by Justin Jennings, who's an exciting offensive player and a sophomore. Pogo moves that time. Went up three times. The third time, he rang the register. He played the piano. So Purdue is up by seven points, and that's their biggest lead so far this game, with 9-10 remaining in the first half. Move Orange down low to free him up for a shot. 
Hardy Griffin fighting for the loose ball with Robinson. Through the legs of the Boilermakers, but they'll bring it up with Roberts. Jennings. Alley-oop. Too short. And there's a three-point shot missed by Orange. He's trying to get on track. Offensive rebound, McDice follows it up. Plays a little soccer going down court, getting ready for the World Games. <laughs> Remember, he's done well at Rupp Arena, both against Kentucky in the regular season and in the first round against Providence. Hitting a three, Conzo Martin, and if he gets on track, Purdue's really going to have a one-two punch with Robinson and Martin. One of the most underrated ball players, not only in Indiana, but in the whole 50 states. And an eight-point lead is the biggest, and McDice reaching in with his second personal foul. After the game, we will award the Chevrolet players of the game as we do at the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game. And in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Bradley, who picked up two fouls early, will come in and stand back, who has done a terrific job off the bench, goes to the sideline. Trapped on the baseline. Artie Griffin outleaps Waddell back in the game for Alabama. Eight-point lead, biggest of the game so far for Purdue. Throwing up a wild shot is Pitts. And that's Caffey, and he'll go to the line to shoot. How is Alabama an aggressive but not necessarily a big team fighting Purdue as well as they are off the glass? That's why I said, Dick, they want a transition game. They also want a slow whistle. They want to, you know, if you let them play, let them be physical because they're so athletic. In the Southeastern Conference, that's what it's known for, is great athletes. Brandon Bradley will go to the bench with three personal fouls. He did not score in the first game of this tournament. And Stanback, who appears that he's going to play the bulk of the time in the middle, comes back in. So here is Caffey, 63% from the line, but he hit two earlier. Misses the first one. And Sean Pecklow, who has two fouls, will check back in, and Pitt's going out for Alabama. So far, the story of this game on the line, Alabama at 50%. Purdue has hit five out of eight. Alabama, not a good free throw, free throw shooting team. Caffey gets one out of two. He's the workhorse, nothing fancy. The women's final four coming soon on CBS. Lager. You beat it up, weigh it down, push it around and it never asks for a day off. You expect that from a Chevy truck. And when it comes time to sell your Chevy, it'll keep on giving with the highest resale value of any full-size pickup. So you not only get more for your dollar, you get more back. From Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. for a calm, quiet meeting, but a tempest rages instead. It's often the case in today's international business climate, which is why we prepare to place high above it all with worldly comforts that refresh, restore, and renew. United Airlines, the calm before and after the storm. Come fly the airline that's united in the world. Come fly the friendly skies. How we doing? Dave needs to see you. I'll be right there. Hey, Ron. Brad, man, how you doing? All right. Brad Johnson has a lot to think about. Where's my table? Dave needs in the kitchen right now. A couple That's of why he chose AT&T. Competitive prices without the hassle is his AT&T business advantage. Hey, Joey, get the big What's up, Dave? We got problems. Call a plumber. So what does Brad think about his long-distance service now? He doesn't. AT&T works for me. Let AT&T work for you. Citibank has really uh, given us a new sense of self because we have our own identity. I have a Citibank Visa card, and it does have my photo on it, so I have one less worry. And not only that, but you can pick what you like. <laughs> it doesn't look like a DMV photo. I don't know why the other credit cards aren't doing the same thing. We need a photo card. <laughs> Family members can tell us apart. Call 1-800-CITIBANK and join the many people who rely on the security of not just Visa, Citibank Visa.
You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Again, our story in Lexington, and only one time has a number nine seed beaten a number one. That was in 92 when UTEP beat Kansas, and uh, Alabama right now shooting only 28%. Wake Forest, Kansas will be the next game, and the big story right now defensively, Purdue doing a job on Marvin Orange, who hit those five threes early against Providence, but he has not scored yet. Zone, two, three. Martin hits another three. Martin was four of 11. Amazingly enough, he's their best three-point shooter and he was 0 for 7 in his career coming into this season, but he worked hard in the off year to try to get range on his jumper. Bam is overconscious of Robinson, which they should be. They can't extend far enough on the weak side. That's how cold so has the shot. Conzo, Martin. Orange has been totally bottled up. Yeah, they've been peeling them so far. <laughs> Orange crush. All those things will be coming out before this game is over. Marty Griffin goes behind to Orange. But so far, he hasn't forced it. One second on the clock, doesn't get it off, and Purdue, for the second time, stops Alabama before they shoot within 35 seconds. Watch the way they free up zone. Over to the weak side. Too far a distance for that baseline to cover, and that baseline follow was Faulkner from New York City, Christ the King High School. Out of Arizona State, has had a, a rocky road getting to Alabama. Robinson has been scoreless in the last six minutes and 20 seconds. He did not score in the last 13 and a half minutes of the first half of their first round game. Standback has it blocked by McDice. Great play by McDice. Sean Pecklove, and he'll call the foul on Conzo Martin, and that will be the 17th foul on Purdue. So it'll be two shots here, but one and one from now on. SEC freshman of the year. Watch how quick he gets off his feet. Now, he was in back that time of stand back and still get up and block the ball. That is God-given talent. You can't teach that. So Alabama with three block shots. Bradley has both of the blocks for Purdue. And here is Sean Pecklove, who is a 55% free throw shooter. He had a career high with eight rebounds, four off the offensive glass in the victory over Providence. This young man went to high school in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Central High, right where the university is. So I bet you many times he took a swim in that Black Warrior River that sure. went right through the mix of the campus there. Sure he did, and he's been a winner. He's been on a state high school championship and junior college championship. Conzo Martin had a shot blocked by Peklo. Now Waddell with the ball, 6.15 remaining in the half, and Faulkner gets it away, two on one. Here is Orange, back to Faulkner, and he's fouled. Good pass back by Orange that time. Outstanding touch pass back. You young guys and girls, watch what a two on one, how it's supposed to be run. Here it comes. Don't dribble too long, pass, then kick it back. Once Roberts turned his head there, he had either foul or the guy had the two points. Roberts committing the foul, but a fine pass by Orange, who still is yet to score. And on the free throw line is Jamal Faulkner, 64% from the line. And it's a seven point lead for Purdue. They've committed 18 fouls. Alabama, only five thus far, so it's still one shot. They have two, one foul to give. Six point lead, so Alabama hangs in there again. And a foul away from the ball, Artie Griffin. That'll be the 16 foul against Bama. So one more and it'll be one and one. Yeah, Joel thought it was one and one then, but the next one will be. Gene Cady finally got his team out of the first round. Bob's screaming for a five second violation and they're gonna signal a new clock on a kick ball. Coach is upset because he figured big dog that time not only bumped one guy, but he bumped two guys. Watch Robinson bang two guys here. We'll get you at the moment. Waddell gets it inside, knocked away from Robinson. And the possession arrow goes the same way to Purdue. Now watch the two fights, the first bump, now comes the second bump. And now it's still another bump, Falcon comes over on him. So what they believe, obviously, stop 
Robinson and you stop Purdue. And you but know, you got to stop Robinson before he touches the ball. He doesn't mind playing a physical game. In fact, he lauded the officials for letting the teams play, unlike he said the Big Ten when they call the foul quickly. So he likes the physical style. Yeah. We call a physical game a slow whistle game. This has been a slow whistle game so far. Waddell misses from the corner, so Alabama with the ball, trailing by six points with five minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here is Pecklov with a three in and out. McDice keeps it alive for Faulkner. Pecklov. So two misses by Alabama when they had open shots, basically. This time down, it's big dogs time, I know, this time down. He's going to elevate. Here it comes. Off the rim. Saved, but into the hands of Conzo Martin. And here is Stanback from the baseline. Coming out of nowhere with McDice. He's all over the floor defensively for the Crimson Tide. So again, a six-point lead, and here comes the turnover. Give it back. Back one more time, and dunk. It worked out more, and Robinson with a few words. Gene took him out. Maybe he has to be taken out. Take a 30, 40 second blow. Second time he's gone to the bench in his hand. Roberts made one out of two. 4.15 on the clock. This is the man that runs the show. He's the traffic cop. Faulkner, short on the three-point attempt. Stand back, fighting out of bounds, and it's last touched by Pitts of Alabama, although he has an argument with the official. It'll be Purdue's ball again. Faulkner only two for seven from the field, and without a lot of firepower, he scored 20 against Providence. They'll need all the scoring they can get from it. Crimson Tide needs a stopper here. Roberts works his way in. McDice had it and lost it to stand back. He's put it back up. Oh, another block oh, behind. And that was going to be Sean Pekla, but Purdue relentless on the offensive oh, glass, and that was done with his second basket. I go to his own press and settle back in his own. Let's see what they're doing. Notice that, setting him back in the man-to-man. -man. And Orange is fouled by Roberts. 
It is the ninth team foul and the second personal on the Purdue point guard. Watch this block from behind. Outstanding. <laughs> and that was all left. No doubt about it. Al, I think at this stage, David Hobbs' team has to stay within range. Right now, it's a 12-point game. They don't want to go into intermission down by 14 or 15 because Purdue has shown the strength to dominate in this game as Waddell comes in for Robert. Uh, and also, psychologically, they got to stay within range. They were such a thin bench, seven, eight men, that when they go in at halftime, if they can be between 9 and 11 points, they're still in the ball game. But as you said, Dick, Dick jumps up to 15 points, then it's a, it's a tough way to fight your way back in the second half. Glenn Robinson back in for Purdue, and here is Orange on the free throw line. He has yet to score, and he gets his first point from the strike. Off the offensive glass, as you look at Robinson with 13 points, Purdue has out-rebounded Alabama 12-7, to so the offensive rebounding story has loomed large here. Two free throws, and the first points of the game for Marvin Orange. It's a 10-point Purdue lead. What tire do you trust in the wet? A tire that removes over two gallons of water per second from under the tread. The all-season MX-4. Another engineering splash from Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. In order to make sure the interior of our new Chevy S-Series would fit a wide range of people, I designed the seats. And I designed the interior to give it more room than it's ever had before. And both of us are very comfortable with that arrangement. The 94 Chevy S-Series. So new from the inside out. Everything else is history. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see if it's gonna get done. It's up to you and to me, and there's no place that I'd rather be. Come on, along, and head for the mountains of Bush Beer. Head for the mountains, it's cold and it's smooth, and it's waiting for you. Come on, head for the mountains of Bush Beer. Our barbecue chicken sandwich already has so many fans, it's at KFC to stay. Folks can't get enough of those strips of chicken smothered in a tangy honey barbecue sauce. Of course, the introductory $1.49 price makes it really tempting. Plus, $1.49 barbecue chicken sandwich forever. The sandwich is here to stay, but the $1.49 is for a limited time. Oh, we are KFC. We do chicken. They cross the line for love, but is there still a price to pay for breaking an old taboo? Love in black and white, an all-new 48 Hours Wednesday. 327 remaining in the half, Purdue by 10. Alabama has not scored in the last five minutes. In fact, they have shot only 24% from the field and no field goal since McDice dunked a rebound. The last seven Crimson Tide points have come at the free throw line. And yes, everyone is going to be beware of the dog. And the question is, can Purdue ride the huge wings of Glenn Robinson into the Sweet 16 and beyond? Part of that flock, and you see huge wings, is Waddell and Mock. And denying is Faulkner. Robinson with the baseline jumper. 15 points for Glenn Robinson. He's... 50% from the field now, shooting-wise, at 5 for 10. New man on orange. Great athlete in Herb Dove. Watch him play him with the ball. And Dove is 6'5", so he's bigger than Roberts at 6'3". That makes it even tougher for orange. Looking at a 1-3-1 defense here. Caffey. Faulkner, who so far has scored six points. He's the Alabama's leading scorer. Right here. And Faulkner fires up a three. And Faulkner with his first three-point hoop. Second of the game for Bama. And it's a nine-point affair. They're going to give Dub the outside shot. Caffey leaning toward the hoop. Here's Robinson. 
One on one against Faulkner, and he's starting to get motoring on that baseline from the left. Quick release. One movement, catch and release, but do it smoothly, without effort. And he said he loves the soft rims here at Kentucky. He said, I like the way the ball bounces in, so if you like the rim, that's going to make you even more confident. Lead is 11 with two minutes to play. They got 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Orange with a jumper. Scramble. Bama. McDice. How did he score that point? How did he get the bucket on that one? First of all, he's very fortunate to pick it up off the floor. He scored it on his way down. And he's bobbling it as he lets it go. 35-26, double team, Waddell. They're playing the two-man game now with Stanback and Waddell. Here's Robinson for three. He's got it. Inside, outside. Glenn Davis, Doc Blanchett from West Point <laughs> football a thousand years ago. He's both in one package. And you were there when they did it in Army, weren't you? <laughs> I was there with Earl Blake, I guess. <laughs> Glenn Robinson was five for seven against Central Florida. He's got 20 points right now. His season's average is 30. I think he's on his way of getting that season's mark. Faulkner comes back and matches it with a three. Keeps him right in range. Nine points. They'd love to get in. Nine points down at halftime. Under a minute and a clock differential of 20 seconds. Martin hits the jumper. He's been hot from outside. Two threes, and the bucket there gives Conzo Martin eight points in the game. There's still a four-second spread between the small clock and the big clock. The big clock is the game clock. And the Purdue fans are on their feet. Black and gold here at Rupp Arena. Purdue man-to-man, -man, overplaying orange as usual. They got dubbed the 6-5 against at six feet even. All he's doing is keeping his eye right in his belly button there. Faulkner misses the three. Robinson loses it inside. And a great play by Walter Pitts, who stripped the ball away from Glenn Robinson as the final shot won't go. And Purdue has led virtually all the way, but Alabama lose. Big time strip that time. Big time. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Purdue 40, Alabama 31. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg will be along with the Pennzoil at the hand. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Michelin, KFC, and by New Light Ice. There are over three million miles of roads in America. And if you're on any one of them, Chevrolet will be there. Our genuine customer care program will take care of you with a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, six-year, 100,000-mile corrosion protection, free courtesy transportation if your car ever needs service, and the largest dealer network in the country. That's genuine customer care. Genuine Chevrolet. Some people think athletes have it made, but nobody's life is easy. Everyone has problems now and then. Drugs and alcohol will not solve your problems. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. This is CBS. The Indianapolis skyline looked like this in 1960 when Indianapolis Power & Light Company was planning for energy consumption in the year when the city would look like this. The skyline now. As IPL plans for energy consumption in the year when the skyline will look like this. The skyline in 2025. All right, we're not sure it'll look just like this, but its energy demands will grow. So we don't wait for the future to plan for it. Indianapolis Power & Light Company. A new discovery. A new technology. A new one-pass corn herbicide. Guardsman eliminates grasses. Guardsman eliminates broadleaf weeds. New Guardsman, more active, more effective, more consistent than bullet or bicep or extra Z. 
see the difference a whole new molecule can make. Try Guardsman, the new leader in premix performance. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, the motor oil you can rely on for performance, protection, and quality. Welcome to New York, everybody. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, the Pennzoil at the Half. I've never seen anybody get so excited watching one guy play as Clark watching Glenn Robinson, the big dog. I love his game. You know, he's got 20 points and three boards and two flushes with flavor in that first half. But it's the defense of Purdue that's allowed them to get the nine-point lead. So I think if they can continue to D up, keep on keeping on, they'll go ahead and win this one. How about from Alabama's side? What can they do for the second half? I think they've really got to attack anytime Purdue presses, get some scores against the pressure, and then knock down some perimeter shots. All right, Special K right now. Let's get some uh, tournament perspective from Billy Packer. He's out at Nassau Coliseum. East region play will be bringing in Billy and James Brown later for UConn against George Washington and Penn against Florida. Uh, Billy, that Penn team you'll be uh, seeing in the second game out there today. Really, what a show they put on Thursday afternoon. Well, Jim, I haven't seen every game in this tournament, but obviously I was involved uh, broadcasting their game and have watched an awful lot of others. Penn was the most impressive t team to me in, in the tournament so far compared to what I expected. This is a legitimate team. This is a better club than the 1979 Penn team that went to the Final Four. It is a legitimate, serious contender to move deep into this region. Sounds like you like Penn today in that game, straight up against Florida. Well, you know, people said, can Penn beat Florida? I think it's the other way around. Can Florida beat Pennsylvania? When you have a backcourt that has a double-double between the two of them, 25 assists in the game for Penn, this is an explosive team with enough power inside to negate the power clubs. How far, Billy, can this Penn team go? I'm like you. I love the way they play. They're a throwback to me and what they're able to do, break you down off the dribble, great backcourt play. How confident is, is this team, and how far can they go? A couple of things about them, Clark, that when every time we talk about an Ivy League team, we think about a provincial Ivy League club. They've been on the road. They've played tough competition. Their schedule outside the league has been first class. Uh, it's a group of kids that uh, not senior-oriented, only one senior in this starting lineup. So it's a, particularly a young club, but I think it's explosive enough uh, to move into this tournament. There'll be a tough out for anybody. All right, let's uh, go back to the first round, Billy. How about fatigue as a factor for some of the teams coming into the tournament? Did it, uh, in fact, uh, play a hand in, in some of the results here, first round? You know, Jim, I saw mental fatigue in those teams that were not the dominant clubs in their, their leagues. As an example, let's take a, a Nebraska, a Providence, a Cincinnati, clubs that were able to play very well in their league postseason tournament who were fatigued not only with their legs but with their minds as well. And uh, certainly the postseason tournaments did not fare well for any of those guys. I don't think they came in at their best. And, uh, and obviously all of them are gone in the first round. Clark, how about you? First round surprises. Not really too many. I was surprised by the fact that we didn't have more lower seeds knock off some of the higher seeds, especially in the middle portion of the tournament. I think when you talk about the top four seeds and the bottom four, then obviously those things I thought would hold the form. But I thought there would be more mayhem in the middle. You know, we lost two number fives. We lost a five in Cal and a five in UCLA. But it's the first time, Billy Packer, since they went to 64 teams back in 1985, that we did not lose a sweet 16 seed in the first round. So void of, of major, major upsets here in the, in the first round. How about the way the conferences performed in this tournament to this point? Well, Jim, we've seen a lot of shakeups in intercollegiate sports. We talk about the Super Division, and of course, the Super uh, Conference has been the Atlantic Coast Conference, the best record of anybody in NCAA tournament play since the field has been expanded, and here they are again this year, 5-0. and oh, The SEC doing well, the Atlantic 10, which everybody talks about how they've moved on so strongly doing well. The Big Ten with all their representatives ready to push it up now the way Purdue is playing. Uh, and, and the Big Eight doing fairly well, but of course, I think we had the biggest disappointment being the Pac-10 right there at 1-3, uh, out in a hurry with everybody except uh, Arizona. Real quick, Billy, A-10, George Washington against UConn. Your first game today. How do you see that one? Well, UConn played a team of Ryder, which was extremely well coached. They were a passive type club in the way they played. It didn't give UConn an opportunity to explode. I think today Yinkadare would have to have a huge game inside to have a presence uh, for Connecticut to be stopped. All right, Billy. We'll look forward to your call there with James Brown coming up later today here on CBS. Now, Thanks, guys. let's set the line up for you at approximately 2.25 Eastern time. That game, UConn, the two seed in the East against uh, George Washington. Most of you in the East, of course, will get that game. Others will be uh, watching uh, the other game taking place at uh, 2 o'clock. But last year, UConn didn't qualify for the tournament. What a difference 12 months can make. A year in the life of three individuals who have teamed to transform the Huskies into legitimate Final Four contenders. Start with the New Englander. Add a star from Redding who is willing and able. 
and mix in the missing piece from the Middle East. The chemistry works, even if the coach's modesty doesn't always. I've been confused uh, all my life. Well then, sit down, relax, maybe have a drink, and why not, since Coach Calhoun owns this popular pub in Hartford. But it's his players who own Connecticut these days and who fill the bar with cheers. Cheers for Husky superstar Danielle Marshall, who, like the coach, is a self-made success, someone who works hard, gets results, and sometimes even surprises himself. I never thought I'd be this good. I knew, you know, with a lot of hard work and stuff that I could become good, but I didn't think I'd be this good. Daniel Marshall is not just a good player. To Daron Sheffer, he's a good friend. Sheffer is a young international star whose UConn games are televised back home to Israel. But one day, Daron's TV screen was filled not with hoops, but with horrors. The massacre in the mosque, setting off bloody riots throughout Israel's occupied territories. The sights and sounds of the recent massacre shook Sheffer, who sought out his family, his new Connecticut family. When he came to me and said, by the way, you heard what happened about the massacre, and we started talking, and, and, and there's no question, a great deal of concern. He won't show it as much, but we've had five or six discussions about it. I'm worried sometimes, but I'm, I'm following uh, the news, and I'm talking with the home, and, and you know, like everybody, I want the, the peace progress to, to, to get better, and hopefully one day there will be peace in the, in the Middle East. Sheffer spoke to the coach, but among Daniel Marshall and his teammates, there's an unspoken pact. There's a lot of problems over there right now. You know, you probably talk to him about that. He might start worrying about it. So we probably do whatever we can to keep his mind off of it because uh, his family's still over there. Thanks to Marshall, Sheffer, and Calhoun, Husky fans can dream of going all the way. They'd like to see Connecticut hoist the championship banner, but they'd also like the coach to buy them a round on the house, his house. If we, if we win the uh, NCAA tournament, I think that uh, uh, we'll, we'll certainly consider that, yeah. Well, Billy uh, said to us earlier he expects an explosion today from UConn. How do you see that one against GW? Well, I think it'll be stick and move with UConn versus the power game, obviously, of George Washington. And I think UConn will prevail anytime you've got a great player like Marshall, who's just a notch below Glenn Robinson in my eyes. You have a chance to put a lot of points on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me square away now that lineup for you at 2 o'clock. I mentioned those in the East will see George Washington against UConn. The other game in our next set will be Wake Forest against Kansas. So we'll split the nation. You'll get either Wake Kansas or GW UConn. Then we'll go three ways at 4.30. Most of the nation will be getting the Maryland, Maryland UMass game. Others will watch Green Bay Syracuse or Penn against Florida. And then we'll close out quadruple header Saturday with Texas against Michigan. And some will watch Wisconsin against Missouri. Of course, we'll have updates on all of those games throughout the afternoon. We'll be sending you back out to Dick and Al in Lexington in just a moment. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil, the motor oil you can rely on for performance, protection, and quality. Here comes a new taste from the inventor of light beer. It's called Light Ice from Miller. It's 100% ice brewed for a taste that's more of what you want. Definitely light for less of what you don't. Is that? It's new light ice from Miller. I hear you're the competitive type. No, but you might be surprised to find out that the Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Special Edition with anti-lock brakes, airbag, air conditioning, and more is over four grand less than the Ford Taurus GL. Which leads me to believe, shouldn't their saying be, have you priced a Ford lately? Yeah, about 4000 worth. It's your money. Are you a high school senior? You want to play next year at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Ask your coach or guidance counselor for one of these student release forms. Fill it out and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in NCAA Division I or II. For more information, call 319-337-1492. Both education and recreation are essential for a healthy life. Now the children in your community can learn the physical and mental skills they will need for success in sports and in school from college coaches and student athletes. 
Youth education through sports, or YES clinics, are offered free of charge at NCAA Championships. Just teaching basic concepts. The NCAA, its corporate partners, and the NCAA member schools in your community provide sponsorship for the YES program, now in its seventh year. YES! Wednesday, a kid problem you won't believe. Whoever's IQ test came back today, it turns out that your son has a superior mind. That's a pretty sick joke, lady. All new Tom Wednesday. Top seed in the Southeast, Purdue, leading Alabama 40 to 31, getting ready for second half action, and we'll be back in just a moment. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire back at halftime. Purdue leading Alabama by nine points. When the games before the game started, Al, you said this is what Robinson has to do today. Get his season's average of 30, 10 rebounds, and spend no more than six minutes on the bench, and this is what he's done. Uh, automatically on top, he's ahead of the game. He hasn't been hitting the window that often. He's slow there. Um, Pine City hit it right in the money. That means he's not in foul trouble. The biggest play of the game, right before the half, this strip by Walter Pitts off of Big Dog. They were down 11, it could have been 13. He lays it back in before halftime. They go in with nine down, which is perfect for Bama. Question is, Purdue's defense has been terrific against Alabama. Where are they gonna get the firepower? They haven't gotten it from Marvin Orange, their guard. Where does it come from in the second half? If they don't hit the perimeter in the second half, Bama's in serious trouble. All right, so we're getting set now for the second half. The winner of this game moves on to the Sweet 16, and Glenn Robinson with his 20 points has now broken the Big Ten single season scoring record for all games, including tournament contests. Dennis Hobson of Ohio State held the old record, so Robinson now has established yet another standard. And all in two years. Don't forget, he did not play as a freshman. He's a prop 48. Coming out, Alabama will have the ball first. It'll be Sean Pecklov inbounding. Marvin Orange, who has scored only two points, nothing from the field. McDice begins at center along with Jamal Faulkner and Artie Griffin also in the backcourt. Man to man by the Boilers. Here's Orange, and he hits the three. You said it. They need the perimeter shot. And Orange, who hit five against Purdue in the first half, brings Bama to within six. That was a huge three. Confident builder. Cuts the score down to where Bama likes it. They like to play within six points. It builds up their confidence. They outscored Providence 24 to 12 when they were down in the first half. Went off with a five-point lead and never looked back. And a turnover. Tell you, Pecklov is doing a great job on Robinson. Very pesky in there. Playing him before he gets the ball. They're putting smaller men on him. They won't put a Caffrey on him. And obviously, they will not put the kid from Mississippi. Antonio McDice, who was hit in the face, was out for seven and a half minutes and came back. He's in the lineup right now. And here's another three-point shot attempted by Griffin. Saved by Pecklov. They go low, and the basket by McDyke. How smooth that was. Nice. Purdue shot 45%, Alabama 33 in the first half. Robinson comes right back with a layup over Pitts. He had the big height advantage there and made the most of it. They got to double down and triple down them. That time they missed it. Here's that diamond one. Four men playing the zone, and one guy playing safety underneath Brantley. There's Brantley should block it. And trap well and it's a four-point game now Purdue is up by nine at the half it is 42 to 38 you get Bantley one of those um, New York City playground stairs those black top stairs Robinson double team put it up and they're gonna Paul call the pushing foul against Purdue and if it's on Bradley that'll be his fourth we'll wait and see it is on Bradley so Brandon Bradley picks up his fourth foul and he'll go to the bench and stand back will replace him. Watch Jamal here going in, adjust a little bit, no problem. Now he gives you that stare. He's back home in New York City. He's adjusted to T-Town in Alabama, but it's difficult. There's no subways. If you don't have a car in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> you can always hail a cab, though, Al. <laughs> Can't get a subway. Oh, okay. Can't hail a subway. Four-point game, Griffin with a great first step to the hoop. Arnie Griffin averaging eight points a game. And it's a two-point affair. Alabama coming out strong. First basket.
basket of the game for Griffin. Robinson is tied up and fouled by Pecklove, and that'll be his third. So the top defender against Glenn Robinson now has three personals. That's what you call belly button, the belly button defense. He's right inside the pants. When Robinson drops his head, that means he's going to take a first quick step. He won't. He gives him one of those wrestling moves. Good call by the ref. Waddell has a screen, has a shot deflected by Griffin. Griffin coming out strong for Alabama there in the dark uniforms as we start the second half. 42 to 40 to score. Turn around McDice. Robinson clears, and Pecklove has committed his fourth foul, and that's what he'd love back. Was well, not a good shot selection that time by the freshman Antonio. John Pecklove goes out of the game and Walter Pitts comes in. The difference is that Pecklove has a couple of inches on Pitts and that's to be a blow for Alabama. They're down by only two. Now, now the big guy will move in, in low. He should move down the blocks. And now they're going to call Robinson. Pitts had stolen the ball and Robinson grabbed his arm. That'll be two fouls on Glenn Robinson. Gene Cady screaming at the officials. Thought it should have gone the other way. Uh, Pitts got a quick hand in there, created that turnover. Robinson got frustrated. They tried to frustrate Robinson the first half and didn't get away with it. Dabba looking to tie the game. I feed it down low, look to pick up Big Dog's third foul. That's right. And Roberts will pick up his third foul. So not Big Dog, but the point guard, Porter Roberts, now has three. And for Purdue, that is their third team foul. Less than three minutes, they picked up three quick ones. And if Robinson picks up his third, they want to keep him in there, they're going to have to go zone. Get it into McDice. And he ties the game. And that's the first time we've had this 9-9 the best play in the game in the first half was that strip by and Pitts. You're right. You said that was a four-point situation. A 13-point lead was eventually a nine-point lead, and Alabama has come back to tie it up. Meanwhile, McDice has picked up his second foul, and the third team foul on Bama. And right now, it looks like Purdue is a little unraveled right now. The athletic ability from Bam is starting to come into it. Stepped on the sideline, and so Alabama gets the ball back, and lo and behold, they can take a lead. They were down by 12 at one point. They're showing a 1-3-1 one, one face here. Griffin for three, and Alabama, whose only lead was 3-2 on a 14-2 run. That's a two-point basket, but Bama will take it. They're up by a pair. What a shocking early second half we're having here. And this time they're going to call Pitts with the foul on Glenn Robinson, team foul number four for Alabama. If you want to foul Alabama, get the ball in the Robinson's hands, you pretty much, they got to foul them, otherwise let them have some chippies down low. And they don't, again, I'm reiterating this, they don't have a deep bench. At best, they go eight deep. When, they, when you see Roy Rogers come in here, then you know they bottomed out. They wrap around Robinson and another foul. They got a call. It's five guys coming. No, coach, they are, not, they are laying a lot of hands on the coach. Look, look around. It's like a beehive. Everybody's around them. They're reaching in on them. Walter Pitts with his second foul, and you talk about the lack of depth. Sean Peklov on the bench with four personal fouls. But Alabama sizzling to start the first four minutes of the second half. Glenn Robinson hits a three, and that's his second of the ball game. 25. But big dog. Purdue regains the lead. Made a nice move from the baseline and curled out, worked off a screen, and got a trifecta. Waddell is on Griffin, but Bama has come back strong in this game after trailing virtually all of the first half as much as 12 points. Missing the three is Orange. McDyke, <laughs> offensive rebound, and Faulkner. Alabama leads by one. And Robinson gives Purdue the lead by one. He is a scorer, not a shooter. He can score off the fast break, off the floor, off three-point land. Take it down low. Hit from the foul line. He is a complete scorer. Over and back. Oh, they didn't call it. They missed that one. 
The ref was there. They didn't call it. Waddell with a push. Robinson has 27 points. Pay attention to the foul situation. That's the fourth on Purdue. There are five on Alabama. The women's final four coming soon on CBS. The powerful all-aluminum alloy engine in the Lexus ES is so incredibly quiet you can hear the cliché So, does it ever get any easier? I don't think it's supposed to. It's a highly sophisticated flight simulator. But around here, we call it the box. Before you get in, you check your ego at the door. Because even though it doesn't actually fly, it's sure going to test how well you can. Engine three, fire. We just lost number three. At American, we come here twice a year to get checked out. Another area where we can regain capability. Challenge our reflexes. Test our reaction time. Get pushed to the limit. I'm going to set you up for a wind shear demonstration. I don't know of another airline that puts more emphasis on training. 30, 20, 10. See you in six months. Oh, I'll be back. But if you're one of those people sitting behind me, I'll bet you'll agree. It's worth it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you aboard American Airlines. Our flight this morning to the East Coast should be a smooth one. We'll be flying at an altitude of 33,000 feet. Monday, Clint Eastwood returns in his most famous role, Dirty Harry. Go ahead. Sudden impact. Make my day. Contains some violent scenes. And on Tuesday, he's tired of the crime. And when they come after his family, he kill us both. he's tired of playing by the rules. Steven Seagal, marked for death, contains some violent scenes. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Lexus, Cellular One, and by American Airlines. What about the over and back they missed, Al? Uh, we all make mistakes. I once said many years ago that television was only going to be a fad. <laughs> 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 Faulkner driving to the hoop, doesn't get the roll, Martin clears the rebound, Herb Dove, outstanding defensive player for Purdue, is checked into their lineup, 47-46 in favor of Purdue, Robinson misses a three, and a foul against Stanback, Robinson has scored all of Purdue's seven points this half, and 14 of their last 16 tallies, so it's been really a one-man gang, dating back to the last few minutes of the first half. And this game could get into a foul shooting game. So both teams have five personal fouls on each other. Alabama's not that strong from the charity line. Alabama coming out strong has outscored Purdue by eight here in the half. Stand back with his second personal foul. And not a good pass by Jamal Faulkner inside. Tipped away by Stand back. Here's Conzo Martin. Dove missed the layup out of bounds. And it's still Purdue's ball. It's too many red shirts fighting for the ball. They had position, but they lost it out of bounds. That time, Dub expected someone to come from the backside. He was anticipating the overlaid. Bama shooting 64% so far in the second half. Stand back, Robinson, Waddell, Dub, and Conzo Martin. They got to get Martin going. He's the outside end of a possible one-two combination for Purdue. They bottle him up. Here's Stanback. That's a big shot for them. Ooh, very big, because they're going to allow Ion to shoot from out there, which they don't even play him. Now they got to move out on him, because he's got confidence that they're drilling out. The average is only four a game, and he's got four now. Purdue by three. Plenty of time remaining. Griffin working against Martin. blinded by that one. I don't know if they uh, called walking on that or out of bounds. 
Stick out of bounds where Purdue had the ball and fell out of bounds. Orange has scored only five points, but Alabama's come back big here, down by three. McDice, I don't think he expected that pass from Orange. Orange is the man that makes them go. The dog guarded by Pitts has a lot of height advantage on him and misses McDice with the rebound and it's last hit by Stanback out of bounds. So Alabama will have the ball trailing by three with 13.27 to go. And Alabama wants a timeout. McDice, by the way, has scored eight points and has cleared nine boards. What a tournament he's having. There's one in Portland, Maine. And one in Portland, Oregon. Chances are, though, you live someplace else in America. So we put one there, too. Cellular One. Clear across America. like a court in Camry are way out. And Pontiac Red Amps holding the line? Thousands left. With their mag and ABS standard. Well, shoot. Don't mind if I do. Hey, nice talking to you, man. Whoa. We are driving excitement, Pontiac. the Energizer battery. It keeps going and... If you demand more from an aftershave than alcohol burn, you gotta try alcohol-free sensitive with Cooling Sensates. It's proof aftershave doesn't have to hurt to work. Take the heat out of aftershave. Demand proof. Try alcohol-free sensitive from Old Spice. Let me guess. Spicy chicken sandwich. It seems that people who like Wendy's spicy chicken made with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices like to step out a bit. Was it the tie? A swimming party ends in tragedy, but was it an accidental drowning or a lover's revenge? Hands off and step back. In the heat of the night, Wednesday. Welcome back to Rupp Arena here in Lexington. Second round action in the Southeast region and Purdue, which has won six in a row in 10 of their last 11 games, clinging to a three-point lead over Alabama. Purdue's got the bench on Bama, but Bama has been tenacious and has hung in this game in a big way here in the second hand. I mean, a nice move adjustment where they don't have Orange bring the ball down to have him count to the baseline and get the ball where he can score and be more of a distributor. Faulkner, plenty of time on the shot clock. Works his way in, finger roll, out of bounds, and they're going to call the foul against Faulkner, his second. I'll tell you, they are not letting Marvin Orange get anything off in the perimeter. And remember that Sean Peklov, who's been the top defender against Glenn Robinson, is on the bench still with four personal fouls. Candy, they put small men on uh, the big dog. Here's Matt Waddell, back door. Very tough shot from under the hoop for Waddell. Two points, his first basket of the ball game, coming in averaging over 11. See, they're not letting Orange bring the ball up. Now, Griffith will give the ball to Orange, and he'll start the action if he can get it to him. Roberts is playing him without the ball. And playing him well, denying the pass to him. Against Providence, Orange brought it up. Griffin is fouled. That was a good move for him to get it up and make sure it will be a two-shot situation, and that will be Purdue's sixteen foul. Each team now with six. Watch Marvin off Rob, Orange there. The drift, they, won't, they won't allow him to get the ball. Watch him come right up. Play, playing them backwards. 
It was not a shooting foul. Herb Dub committing the foul. Try to get it up there with the shot. Team fouls are all even now at six. So the next foul will result in one and one for both sides. Caffrey wants it down low. Giving McDice a breather right now. He's played big in this game. Here is Griffin off the glass. Bad shot, rebound by Robinson, and that is his sixth rebound. So Purdue, after that surge in which Alabama came back, now putting the heat on again. That was Porter Roberts with the penetration. Need a stopper right here. I get it to Caffrey. Alabama scoreless in the last four minutes after they took a two-point lead in this game. Here is Faulkner, and he's got a three. Jamal Faulkner with his third three-point basket of the game. He leads everybody in that category. And again, it's four. Coming back for three is Robinson. And the rebound by Faulkner, and he's hacked by Dove from behind. And that'll be one and one coming up as Dove committing the foul. They'll take the long walk up court. This is where the game's going to be decided in the next 11 minutes and 20 seconds, I believe, on the foul line. Gene Cady's team, you know, everyone was saying, why can't Cady bring the team beyond the first and second round? And yesterday, Glenn Robinson told everyone, he says, look, we have to play the game. Cady can't play. He can't shoot for us. He can't defend. And one thing he really can't do is block some shots. Glenn Robinson got a good response from that. Alabama 10 of 12 from the line today, and Faulkner makes the first. SEC, freshman of the, not SEC, SEC, no, yeah, yeah. freshman of the year at Arizona State originally. That's right. Faulkner, then he transferred over to Tuscaloosa, sat out a year. Actually did not play, because he makes one of two for 18 months and wasn't eligible till the fourth game this year, so he's been kind of rusty. Got heated up with 20 points. In the first game of this tournament, he's got 20 right now. Three-point lead for Purdue. Stand back. And not shooting out there is Dove, and a steal by Griffin. Diamond down by three, and stand back. Knocks it out of bounds. That looped too high in the air. Waddell will come back in in the backcourt for the Boilermakers. Double go out. He picked up two quick personals. Want to get some more outside shooting down the other end with Waddell going in. Faulkner has the last six Alabama points. Being guarded by Robinson inside. Happy stuffed in by Faulkner. And Faulkner is starting to give Alabama the firepower they really have lacked coming into this tournament. This is a team that struggled early, as you mentioned, Al, lost five of their first eight and then beat Arkansas after a team meeting and went from there. Roberts with a jumper, and it's a three-point lead again, Purdue. Usually the better team tightens up, and I believe Purdue is the better team off the papers and so on, off the, the records and so forth, but if Alabama can stay close going into the six, seven-minute mark, Producing trouble. Halfway through the second half of the game. Orange, boy, unable to get any shots off against Roberts. He's done a yeoman job defensively. Pitts misses in the paint, rebound by Big Dog, and that's number seven for him. Robinson has scored 27 in the game himself. Robinson's kind of growling now. I think the next time he gets the ball, he's going to finalize. Waddell working against Griffin. Nice shot. So both Purdue guards, Waddell and Roberts, have hit key inside jumpers in the last minute or so. That was an excellent move about two minutes ago, putting Matt Waddell back in the ball game. Nice move by Coach Katie. Lead is five. They're going to bring Pekla back in and McDice. This is the man they want with the ball. He'll dish it. Caffey fighting his own man, Pitts, inside. make it Caffey, and that's only his first, but it'll be one and one. Both teams in the bonus now. There's an outstanding move here by Waddell. Huge buckets to put them up five. 
Justin Jennings coming in the game for Purdue as Waddell, who is the in name for three straight years in high school, the most complete player in Indiana. That's pretty good for one year. When you do it three times, it's for real. And Sean Peklov returns to the Alabama lineup. He'll be defending Robinson. He has four personal fouls, and McDice, the freshman big man, in there with him. Well, they just moved the big dog to Pine City just temporarily. Because when he comes back, coach knows they got to make the run. They want him fresh the last eight minutes of the game. There's 9.05 at this time. I say about a minute, and he's back in to make the run to the Roses. 58-52. Stand back makes one free throw. Nine minutes remaining. Alabama was down by as many as 12 points in the first half. Came back, took a two-point lead. Purdue up by six. Winner gets the survivor of Wake Forest in Kansas and the Sweet 16 in Knoxville next week. Ref, so letting them play, a lot of pushing and shoving underneath. Three-point shot missed by Pecklow. Normally, he's not a three-point shooter. Coming back baseline, Martin. Donovan will not take it unless he's absolutely open. This guy will take it if he's open underneath. The Great screen. pass to, Je to Jennings from Waddell. Matt Waddell playing big right here. J.J. just put the ball in. The points should go on Waddell. Six assists for Matt Waddell, the junior, from Tipton, Indiana, and a timeout call by Purdue. Alabama. Alabama's timeout. Hobbs needs to talk it over before the game gets out of hand. Coming soon on CBS. This is the sports car no one could match. Not Acura, not Mazda, not even Porsche could answer our challenge to match Firebird's standard driver and passenger airbags, standard anti-lock brakes, and 275 horsepower engine for even twice the price of this new Firebird formula. Soon other sports cars will try to close the distance, and that's okay. But that will be then. This new Firebird is now. All over the world, when people are late, you're guaranteed to hear excuses. The, um, alarm clock broke. Mein Goldfisch ist gestorben. Probleme des Oh. At UPS, however, we guarantee we'll be on time. In fact, we now guarantee on-time delivery to hundreds of cities around the world or your money back. So while you might hear, you'll never hear it from us. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over 2 million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. From Gillette comes a revolutionary form of antiperspirant protection. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. Because it's a clear, clean, powerful gel, it goes on smoothly with no white residue to form an invisible barrier of protection. All day protection against both wetness and odor. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. One of the advanced deodorants and antiperspirants in the Gillette series. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. The stars of the game have been Glenn Robinson for Purdue and Jamal Faulkner from Alabama who's coming back in the ball game. Alabama started red hot this half but Purdue's defense has come into play. Bama has missed 10 of its last 12 shots. So now Orange at the point. He's only one for six from the field, and Roberts and Dove have really done a blanket job on him today. Got to remember, Alabama plays on this court in their conference. Against Kentucky. Eight on the shot clock. They're going to give Pitts the three, and he'll take it. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. I don't think that was a good decision, even if he missed it. Five-point lead, Purdue, 7.35 remaining. Both teams in the one-and-one, and, one and a steal by McDice. Bad pass by Glenn Robinson. Foul 
in the basket counts, and all of a sudden that timeout seems to have done wonders for Alabama. Bad, bad move by Stanback that time. You got a very weak foul shooter going down. And a bad pass by Robinson first. Antonio only shoots 54% from the foul line. I would have grabbed him and put him on the foul line if it wasn't uh, intentional where he got two foul shots. Good point, and he could have fouled him before it got close yeah. for the intention. Yeah. So every, every time he goes to the foul line, it's an adventure. Let's see what happens this time with Antonio. He could be on a roll. Nope, not that time, but he'll take the deuce at 60 to 57 in favor of Purdue. Robinson, that was his first turnover. Open it up underneath and get it down to Big Dog. Conzo Martin, he's been quiet. Rebound by Sean Pecklove. Remember, Pecklove is playing with four personal fouls. Bama down by three. They were down by nine at the half. Took a lead and found themselves trailing by eight. Now they're making another run. You gotta remember that Bama all can rebound. Whole yeah. five. You can have Faulkner in and out. He was open. Here's Martin. Dangerous pass. Gambling was Faulkner and Martin may burn him, but a block and a foul, and that may be Peckluck's fifth foul and he's gone. It is. Yeah, he knew he had four. Instinct made him go over. So Sean Pecklov, the only senior starter from Tuscaloosa, has fouled out to the delight of the Purdue fans. Pecklov scored five points and had three rebounds. He came over to help another defender, but he's gone. He always reaches for the ball. He constantly goes towards the ball. Now that's not him there. Here he is coming from behind. Yeah, he got him. Got him on the arm. Got him on the arm and maybe a little bit of the hip in the back. It's not over yet, son. You might get to Nashville. Game's tight. On his way to Knoxville, Knoxville of excuse me, I Nashville. Think, I think I'm he thinking of Hound Dog and Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to stop off and see uh, the Presley exhibit. You want to see Vanderbilt before uh, Tennessee? <laughs> no, I don't want to see the Commodores. Peklov fouls out having scored five, but his big work was as a leader on the floor, good rebounder, and of course the, the, the defense he put on Robinson, if you can say, you can defend Robinson, who has 27 points. So they're going to have to go with smaller people against the 6'8 junior from Gary, Indiana. They're going to bring in Artie Griffin. So it'll be Griffin, McDice, Faulkner, Orange, and uh, also Pitts. Walter Pitts is the fifth man. They're not hurting with Artie Griffin. Obviously, he was a star. He's out at junior college in Texas. He has rainbow range. Martin. This is the free throw. There are a lot of ways to... Say relax, it's okay. Sean Pecklove still upset over that call. Martin makes the second. Technical foul was called on Pecklove. He argued a little bit too much to the officials like. So now Waddell shoots the first. You know what I feel, Dick, and I'm not trying to be a cutie here. I feel that when a foul is called, if you're going to call a technical on a coach or a player, it should be the ref that called the foul, not one of his teammates out there. And I think that would be a good rule to put in because the ref that made the call knows how hairline it was or wasn't. And also, you got to give a guy some leeway. I mean, here the guy is fouled out of the game. He's going to be a little emotional out there. That's judgment. 63 to 57, Purdue taking advantage of the technical. They get the ball back as well with six and a half to play. There's also a technical in the first half on the coach. Robinson bottled up. Oh, yes. Swatted out of bounds by McDice. That's his second block of the game. But I tell you, Glenn Robinson is not getting any easy times against Bama this half. Uh, they're, they're around all the way. Now watch McDice come from the back. So quick off his feet and smooth. No effort, no straining. What timing for McDice, a freshman. Go, go. Seven blocks for Alabama, two for McDice. Six-point lead, Purdue. Still plenty of time. 
Robinson working against Pitts. And he scores on the baseline. When you don't have Sean Pecklove and his size, Robinson is going to have an easier time. Yeah, yeah Pitts just doesn't have the size. Pitts should try to catch Robinson in the charge and foul. 29 points for Robinson. Remember, his season's average is just over 30, and he leads the nation. It's really the call a needed basket, but it is a needed basket this time down. Back up to eight. Halftime lead, remember, was nine. Faulkner. Loose ball, and the possession arrow will go the other way. So it'll be Purdue's ball. The odds are the loose ball. Bama comes up with it. They're so athletic and so quick. Gene Cady, whose team got off to the best start in their school history, winning their first 14 games, and then have won 10 of their last 11. It's too early to spread out. Too much time left. Got to play a normal game. If they spread out, ah, another oh. bad pass. They can't keep making the cross courts. It's not working. Faulkner back to Orange. And Marvin Orange now with only seven points. And I tell you, Alabama is so quick. Anticipation. Went too soon to the clock. Way too soon. There's a little over five minutes left. Got to put it up, Purdue. You do this, you start to choke up, and the better team at the end. Here's Conzo Martin, short with the three, and a pushing foul against Robinson, and that'll be his third as McDice is fouled. You know, you lose a lot of momentum, and you experienced it against other coaches when you were at Marquette, when you lose the momentum by going into the freeze too much. That foul was on standback, by the way. Very simply in coaching, you must play to win at all times. Never play not to lose. And the one move that you make that is the toughest move that any coach has to call, when do you start playing against the clock? Faulkner limped to the bench. His left ankle is hurting him. Faulkner has scored 22 points and he is shaken up. So they bring in Caffey for him. So it's McDice, Caffey, Griffin, Pitts, and Orange in there for Alabama. Five minutes to go. There's a ton of time left and don't forget this young man here, this freshman is only shooting 54%. Big one. McDice with 11 points and 11 boards. And there's Faulkner. Is that a cramp? No, it doesn't. It looks like it might have been a calf injury. Five minutes to go. One out of two, but Pitts gets the offensive rebound. Blocked by Glenn Robinson. Five-point Purdue lead. Waddell. No foul call. McDice was all over his back. It's still Purdue ball. Two shots at the line with 4.42 to play. Alabama so tenacious and quick. And a foul against Alabama. And this will be a two-shot situation as Bama committing its 10th team foul. Call that the super bonus. A little bit too early in the rule book for 10. I think they should back it up a little bit next year, make it 12 or 13. Jason Cappy committing his second foul. And here's Glenn Robinson, who, according to Gene Cady, said, I like... Robinson's coachability, similar to that of Sidney Moncrief of Arkansas. Katie was an assistant at Arkansas. But he says as far as his play, he says he's like Oscar Robinson. Oscar could play guard some, he could play forward some in a game, he could play center. He says right now he reminds me most of Oscar Robinson, but of course he's got a lot more inches. I nicknamed Moncrief Superman. He was Superman. He'd still be playing in the NBA if he didn't play down low. They put him down low all the time, and his body wasn't that strong. I remember calling those guys the triplets. Remember their That's name, right. Dick? Del Creep, Brewer, Brewer Del. You're right, on the money. Dove is into the ball game. 31 points. Well, Al, you said Glenn Robinson needed to hit a season's average, and he's done just that. And he needs one rebound to get 10 off the window. And I don't think he's going back to Tap City unless the... Uh, with a three, that's his fourth three-point basket of the game, and again a four-point game, 67-63. One-three-one pressure. 
Winner will advance to the Sweet 16 against the survivor of Kansas and Wake Forest. Coming up next here at Rupp Arena. Working the clock a little bit too much. Going to go offensively strong. He'll go offensively strong. Great feed. Oh, oh, hey. The basket counts in the foul, and that was a All-America pass inside. And that was an athletic move by Herb Dump. Herb Dump is a player. Remember that. The problem is he played center in college, in high school. He now is learning how to face the basket. There's the big assist from Big Dog, and there's the athletic move. He walked up the man's chest and downed it. Here it comes from another angle, up his chest. <laughs> and Pitts bounced off him like a pinball and shaken up. So for Pitts, his third personal foul, but Herb Dove, Pitts now has to be helped to the bench. Herb Dove, who's one of the best defenders on the team, and now you can see the other athletic abilities you talked about. And also, the outstanding assist that time by Big Dog. You don't give him credit for it. The problem with Big Dog, in my eyes, in my eyes, is that in transition defensively, he seems to drift or float going down court. But didn't Larry Bird and Magic Johnson have the same problems when they were stars in college? Well, what you do with big stars like this, you're always looking for a chink in their armor. It's like great coaches like Dean Smith and Bobby Knight and the beat goes on. You try to find something that's wrong with them. When you find out that something's wrong with somebody, then you know that person is good. How many it's like teams? someone says about me, I can't pronounce names. That's a, gee, that's a nice compliment to me. Right. That must mean I know something about basketball. <laughs> if, you want, if you want someone that knows names, get an English teacher. You're great, Al. You're great. <laughs> Dove misses the attempt for the three-point play, so the lead is six. How many teams would like to have Glenn Robinson on their uh, squad now in this tournament? Huh? In the NBA, 27. Oh, you mean in college? Yeah, and the NBA. <laughs> Griffin missed the three. 340 remaining. And Alabama is going to have to start working for some points here. Here's Caffey. Nowhere to go. Good defense by Brantley. Uh, Playing with four fouls. Plenty of time left. Only a six-point spread. They score here. They're, they're right there. They're on the money. Griffin knifing in against Waddell. Great kiss off the glass by Griffin. And he's got seven points. The leading scorer, 25 for Faulkner. McDice has 11. The two players in double figures for Alabama. 1-3-1 one, one again. Looking to trap. In the corner, Bradley. He won't shoot. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Cross court to Dove again. Deja vu. I am pointing at who scored that basket. Gene Cady scored that basket in practice yesterday. He knew they were going to throw a 1-3-1, one, one, and the holes are on the baseline coming out of each corner. Good coaching. And Dove found the seams. 71-65 Purdue, winding down to two and a half to play. Getting it to Coffey. Griffin, short on the three. Robinson gets the big rebound. That's his tenth of the game. So he's got over 30 points and 10 rebounds, matching his season's average in both departments. Daly for the steal is orange. Now Roberts. Still too soon to work the clock. Or oh, they're trying to... Four steals, gamble all over the floor. Helter Skelter basketball, but that's Alabama style. Herb will not take it from there. He'll drive if he can, but he won't take it from there. Five on the he shot will. clock. He Here is Waddell, and he's fouled by McDice. He was fouled as Waddell fired in three-point territory, I believe, with under two minutes to play. And it'll be Gil Rice on the line. Let's watch on the screen here. Now here's where they go cross court against the 1-3-1. One, one, and Dove is obviously open. Nobody in the neighborhood, Mr. Roberts. You know, earlier we would have to say that Purdue is a one-man gang looking at what Robinson was doing and not much support. But Waddell with his passing, his shooting, now on the line, hitting big free throws at 79% shooter. The other players at Purdue coming up big in the final moments here. 
Well, what happens, they are overplaying Big Dog every chance they can, but the other guy's got to produce. It's like Dovey produced when they were overplaying. The same, the same way with um, Waddell. He came in here, he buried a couple when they're overplaying the Big Dog. But it's hard when you know the pressure's on you. You know that you've got to stand up because they're double, triple teaming GM, GR, Glenn Robinson. Stand back came in the game. Waddell, four for four from the line. And let's not forget Porter Roberts, who did a tremendous job on Marvin Orange. The defense. That's really what's going to do it if Purdue wins the defense. Most people would jump at the chance. Ten days in South America. But this was business, and I was 5,000 miles from home, trying to keep my bearings, trying to negotiate, sometimes just trying to communicate, all the while hoping to pull this whole thing off so I could head back. Yeah, I'm going to be another day. You know, it's funny, being away so long. When you come across something familiar, Going home, Mr. Reynolds? It can be a pretty welcome sight. I'm halfway there. Four, four, one. No, no, that's not it. Four, five, one. No, that's that stupid screen pass. I can't remember the number. I better call an audible. <clears throat> call Candace. So, Steve. You got the tickets? Okay, Candace, here's the deal. I got five on the 40 for the 14th, three on the 15th. So the 30th, good with six numbers. On the 40 for the 14th again. Call now for the revolutionary voice activated phone card. Only from Sprint. If you're looking for a little spice in your life, you'll love the new Grand Prix Sport Coupe. Sure, it has all the safety of dual airbags and anti lock brakes. But with a 24-valve, 210-horsepower V6, yeah! it still generates plenty of heat. The Grand Prix Sport Coupe from Pontiac. In the preseason, I don't get out much. But come spring, There's nothing more relaxing than a little walk in the park. All men are created equal. Some just work harder in the preseason. A new breed of cop. Chris Trapjack. With a powerful ally. Fire him or support him. Or else. Or else I'm going to tip your desk over on you. Thursdays, get set for traps. Back here at Rupp Arena. Second round action in the southeast region in Lexington and Purdue. Leading Alabama 74 to 65. Alabama has only one timeout left. Both teams shooting two at the line, and Bama has the advantage in the possession hour, but time beginning to run out for them, Al. Don't want to give them a three-point play at this time. Here's Faulkner. Triple team. Gets it out to Orange. Three-point shot. Short. And he forced it. It's going to be a timeout, very alert play, called by Alabama before the turnover. They call the timeout. Look what some car makers have been offering. Air-conditioned glove compartment? What kind of feature is that? How about a feature like, won't leave me stranded on the side of the road? As in a reputation for dependability? Hey, you'll find it in one place. Toyota Tercel. The right amount of car for the right amount of money. And look, best model in its price class and initial quality. I get that from J.D. Power & Associates. They get it from Tercel owners. And that's a feature you won't find on any window sticker. Topping thin crust pizzas just $12.99 plus three months of showtime free. It's a hot deal, it's a cool deal. A diamond knows I want it, I need it. Deal two medium, two topping thin crust pizzas just $12.99 plus three months of great entertainment on showtime free. Something for nothing when you call down and know. They're back seat. Yeah, 
careful driving and a set of Michelins. If you're looking for a national cellular network, we can recommend one. Cellular One. Clear across America. Mr. Brawley? Yes. Do you ever think about your HP LaserJet printer? Uh, not anymore. Before I bought it, I did. What do you mean? Well, I researched printers, and LaserJet gave me everything I wanted. But now you say you don't think about it. No, I don't have to. It works. Hmm. Oh, I see. It works for you, and you ignore it. Hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Oh, okay. We've seen it all before. Uh, LaserJet neglect. Hmm. Well, I have the same problem with plants. HP LaserJet printers. You do your job, we'll do ours. Monday on The Late Show, Bill Cosby and singer Sheryl Crow. On the next day, we reunite Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson. <laughs> Purdue's lead is nine, and Alabama had to call their last time out with 1.36 to go. Bama closed the game to within four with 4.18 to go, but Dubs two dunks and three free throws by Waddell have keep Purdue's lead here. Remember now, there's only 15 seconds left on the shot clock. The shot clock was not retooled. If they need threes, they got to go to Faulkner and a steal. Bad pass off the inbound by Orange. And that turnover could kill, and uh, that'll be a foul against Orange as well. And two shots at the other end, Roberts will be shooting. Now you work the clock. You're in the bonus, so the first foul shot becomes easy. We're pretty close to playing taps. The soldier with the trumpet is uh, taking it out of the box. He's wetting his lips. Here is Roberts on the free throw line. He's two for four from there today. But uh, he will get a lot of credit, even though he has scored six points to this point, for his terrific defense in nullifying Marvin Orange, who had five three-pointers to keep Bama in the game against Providence. But today it's different. Jennings in the ball game. He must hit this one because then it becomes four possessions. Three possessions, they can score nine points and go to OT. But if he makes this one, they need four possessions, Bama. They need four. Not good with 131 remaining. And talking about Orange, he has shot only two of eight from the field. And the Purdue foul inside. You don't want to stop the clock when you have a lead in the final moments of the game. And Bama will shoot two. Waddell with the foul, his third personal of the ball game. Marvin Orange scored 20 points on Thursday. And we have mentioned many times about the threes he hit early. Today has only seven points and one three-point basket. The Purdue guards took him out of the game. you got to remember, he's not only a scorer, but he's the guy that runs the show. It's very difficult to be a point guard and score and dish. And it was not only the guards, Herb Dove, again, who has contributed so many ways off the bench when he was in there. Artie Griffin, one out of two, and Bama still has it, and the three-point shot is short, kind of rushed that one, did Griffin. Robinson gets the rebound, and that's his 11th of the game. 75-66, Purdue by nine, and a foul called against Orange. The is on Orange. One ten remaining in the game, and Alabama may be headed to their 10th setback of the year, likely will finish 20 and 10. And Conzo Martin will go to the line. But for Glenn Robinson, another big day and going over 30 points scoring for the eighth straight time. Dove will come in for Waddell. So Purdue will ride the wings again of Glenn Robinson into the Sweet 16 at Knoxville against the winner of the next game coming up between Kansas and Wake Forest. Martin hits them both. Lead is 11. I'd set back in the matchup zone, overplay the ball, just don't let him have the trifecta shot. Driving in, Robinson on the block. He rejected it, his second block. McDice gets it back, and he puts it in, and Dove is on the floor, shaken up. Number 21 for Purdue. And stand back, releasing early. Hey, ref, stop the clock, will you? The guy's hurt. Dove has hurt. He's hurt. He can't be out there. 
Faulkner missed the three. And now, finally, they call the timeout some 20 seconds after Doug first went down. Yep. Here's the block coming. Watch Dove on the way down. There, no. Right there. Yeah, right there. Twisted it right there. The dice was behind him. Must have gotten tangled. 45 plus remaining. So Dove, with eight points and two rebounds, goes to the bench. He'll have a few days before Purdue has to get ready. Well, before this game started, you said what? The Purdue Boilermakers need from Glenn Robinson. You said they needed his average. Well, here's what he's done today. I said he needed 30 plus points. He had to get 10 off the window. He had to be not in Pine City more than six minutes because that means he's in foul trouble. So we pretty much drilled it. Give yourself a checkpoint. Well, not too difficult <laughs> to get checkpoints with this guy. Waddell hits the front end, 70 to 68. Well, the farthest Purdue has ever gone in an NCAA championship, you have to go back to 1980 when they lost to uh, UCLA in the national semifinals. Those were the days when John Wooden had the string going and they beat Iowa in a consolation game. They don't have consolation games anymore. Consolation games are very difficult to play. You have a great season, you lose your last two games because of consolation. Faulkner misses. Pitts has it slapped away and Robinson called for the foul. 13 point Purdue lead with 30.5 seconds remaining. Alabama did a nice job today. Great athletes, a lot of injuries, and uh, things just didn't go right for them. They were right there. Well, they're David Hobbs in his second year. Key thing for them, the program he's run, and the, and the fact is they came back after the early adversity. They beat Arkansas. That was a big victory for them. They won 17 of their last 21 games before this contest. Their only loss was at Mississippi, at Kentucky, and at Arkansas before they lost to Florida in the SEC semifinals. But uh, you can see they're well coached because they scrap, they play good defense, and they rebound well. Well, he's more like a brown suit. He's more low profile. He's not like Wim Sanderson with all those bright jackets and everything he said was in the newspapers and so forth. So it's a different type of personality as a coach. Lead is 11 for Purdue. Boilermakers will take the number one seed to Knoxville in the Southeast Regional Semifinals next week. And they'll be saluted by their big throng of supporters here on the alley who puts the exclamation point on. That was Mr. Robinson. 33 points. Big Dog wanted one more. He wasn't completely failed. He's still eating. <laughs> Orange hits a three. If it only had been earlier, but that'll do it. Purdue has defeated Alabama and will go to the Sweet 16. Final score, Purdue 83, Alabama 73. So the Boilermakers have advanced. They're now 28 and 4. So Gene Cady's Purdue Boilermakers, seated number one will advance to the regional semifinals and will play the winner of Wake Forest in Kansas coming up next here at Rupp Arena. And the Chevrolet players of the game are Jamal Faulkner of Alabama. He scored 25. And Glenn Robinson of Purdue with 33 points and 11 rebounds. Jim Nance will have it all for you at the other end. Al McGuire and Dick Stockton saying so long from Rupp Arena. Purdue 